Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at setting up analog APRS on my Anytone UV878. So what I'll do first is we'll jump over to the computer and set up the CPS software so that APRS is enabled on the radio and then we'll hook the radio up see what that looks like and then jump back over to the computer and check the maps to see what everything looks like once it's activated and working. So we're taking a look at the 878's CPS software. The first thing I'm going to do is come to the top menu bar and select the tool pull down. And then I'm going to go down to options. And you can see in my case I've already got GPS and APRS checked. If yours are unchecked you'll want to check those to turn those features on. Once you've got them checked, just hit OK. Next up, I'm going to go to the optional settings on the menu tree. You can see that a new window pops up. On this window, I'm going to go to the GPS ranging tab. These are the options that work for me. I've got GPS set to on. I've got get GPS positioning set to on. My time zone is GMT minus 5. I'm on the east coast of the U.S. Ranging interval is 5. Distance units is inch system. GPS template information is off, and GPS mode is GPS. So now that I have those all entered in, I'm just going to say OK, move on to the next step. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up the APRS options from the menu tree. So you can see from the window here, there's a ton of options in here, but we're really only going to be concerned with these up here and these down here. This section over here is all for digital mode, and we'll talk about this section in a minute. So the first field is the manual TX interval. And I've got mine set to one second. And what the purpose of this is for is that if you were to manually transmit an APRS packet by activating the PTT key, the radio would not allow another packet to be transmitted until the number of seconds shown in this field had expired. So for example, if this were set to 60 seconds and you manually transmitted an APRS packet and then tried to do another one 10 seconds later, the radio wouldn't transmit any APRS data, it would just dead key. But after that 60 seconds were up, if you hit that PTT again, it would transmit a new APRS packet. The next field is for automatic APRS packet transmitting. So you can see right now I've got mine set to 150 seconds. That seems to work well for me when I'm out mobile. Now you may want to make the interval a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. That depends on your situation. Now if you want to turn it off completely, and have full manual control over when the radio will transmit APRS packets, you can just slide this all the way up to the top and choose off. So the next field, support for roaming. I don't think this one matters one way or the other, whether it's off or on, but I'm going to leave it off since I'm not using it. Now the next option is for a fixed location beacon. What this means is that if you don't have your GPS turned on, or you don't have a GPS signal, or you don't want to use the GPS, and you just want to have the radio in one spot and you know what those coordinates are, you can set this to on. Then you can see this section opens up and you can edit these fields here, which of course are your latitude and longitude. So once this is set to on and you've got these set the way you want, the radio will transmit these coordinates on your APRS packet rather than what the coordinates are in the GPS. So under the analog section, these are the settings that I've got. APRX transmit tone is set to off. For the destination call sign, I've got the call sign of one of the local digipeters in the area. So theoretically, you shouldn't necessarily need anything in here unless you want to route to a specific digipeter. But in my case, when I had this blank, the packet didn't seem to transmit properly and it didn't work until I entered something in here. And then the next field is the SSID for the digipeter associated with this call sign. Now again, this is unique to my area, and I don't know that it's critical what you have in here, as long as you have something in here. Next up, of course, I've got my call sign in this field, and I've chosen dash nine for my SSID. Now when I first started out, I was using dash five, but I did a little research and it seems like dash nine is sort of the recommended SSID for mobile use, which is what I'm probably gonna be using this for primarily. So now the APRS symbol table and map icon, these are two symbols that kind of work in conjunction to help define the little symbol that shows up on the APRS map. So I found this image on a website. I'll leave a link to that website down in the description. So I like the way this table is formatted. It's set up in sort of a matrix fashion. 
and it makes it easy for you to figure out what symbol should be used with which characters. So you can see here the APRS symbol type, that is the character that's represented here, either a forward slash or a backslash. And then the APRS map icon is the character that's represented in these gray rows within the table. So you can see in my case, I'm using the forward slash and the greater than symbol. So if I look for the greater than symbol under the forward slash row, you can see my icon is gonna be a little car. But again, you could set these to anything. So for instance, you could use the forward slash and a capital S here to get yourself a space shuttle icon. So wide 2-2 seems to be a path that works for me, but you can experiment with this a little bit if you're familiar with APRS signal paths. Different paths may work better in different areas. So down here under the sending text, I've just got this text in here. You can pretty much put anything you want in here. Over here on the right side, you can see my transmit frequency is set to 144.390. So for the rest of the fields here, I've just used the default settings. You can experiment with these if you want to. So next up, what I'm going to do is go into the channel database and I'm going to add a new channel. Now, as you can see, I've already added mine and I've added it to the end of the list here, but you can add yours anywhere you want within the database. So I'm going to double click this to open up the settings and I'll show you guys what I've got. So first up, I've given it a channel name, 2 meter APRS, but you can call yours whatever you want to. My receive frequency and my transmit frequency are both 144.390 megahertz, which is the APRS 2 meter frequency for the US. I've got the channel type set to analog. I've got the transmit power set to turbo, which is the highest that the radio can go. I've got the bandwidth set to 25K. I've got the busy lock off for now, but I do want to experiment with that a little bit because I think it might be useful in the automatic mode. But I've added the channel to my simplex scan list. Under the APS report type, because we're working with analog APRS, that's what I've chosen. Under the analog APRS PTT mode, when I was originally experimenting with this, I had this set to start of transmission. It didn't really seem to work too well in that mode. So I switched it over to end of transmission and that seemed to clear up some of the problems I was having. The next two settings are grayed out for analog mode. And then I've got exclude channel from roaming set to off. Down here under the analog section, you can see I've got the CTC SSD code and encode set to off. I've got the squelch mode set to carrier, which is the only option. I've got optional signals set to off. These next three are blank and my PTT ID is turned off. Over on this side, I've left reverse and two-tone decode empty and the custom CTCSS doesn't really matter. This just must be a default setting that's in here. Now, of course, because this is analog, all of these options are grayed out and I don't need to adjust them. Likewise, I'm gonna leave all of these settings up here unchecked as well. So that's it for this window. I can just say okay and move on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the settings within the CPS software. So the next thing to do is write this code plug into the radio and then hook up an antenna and see if everything is working. Okay, so I'm gonna connect up my programming cable to the radio. And then just like I'd write any other code plug, I'll first set my COM port to make sure that I'm communicating with the radio. And then I will write this to the radio. Since I'm not updating the contact list, I can leave that one unchecked, but I will check off other data, which will write everything else to the radio. And we'll say, okay, let that write to the radio. And now the radio will reboot and I'll disconnect it and we'll be ready to try it out. As you can see, I've got a piece of coax here where the antenna should be, and this is connected to an outside antenna that I have up on the house. So you can see when the radio first boots up, there's a little icon here that's currently shaded gray. What that means is that the GPS is on, but it's not ready for use just yet. It hasn't locked on to a signal. Now if I try and transmit an APRS packet either manually through the push to talk switch or through the timer, it's just gonna transmit a dead key until the GPS comes online. And you'll be able to tell when the GPS comes online because this little icon will turn red. As you can see, that icon has turned red. The GPS is locked onto a signal, so we should be ready to send some APRS packets out. 
So I've got the volume up on the radio, obviously, and you heard some APRS traffic there. That's pretty much what it sounds like. Now, I've got another 2-meter radio off to the side here that you guys can't see. I'm going to turn the volume up on that, and let's take a listen and make sure that when I transmit an APRS packet with this radio, that it sounds more or less like that. That'll give us an indication as to whether or not we're actually transmitting an APRS packet or not. So what you saw and heard there is when I pushed the push to talk switch and then let it go, you saw that the radio transmitted an APRS packet and you could see that it said that it was doing that on the screen. While it was transmitting, you should have heard the packet coming through the radio that I have set up over here. And then immediately afterward, there were two other packets. And what that was, was other stations out in the ether somewhere retransmitting the packet that I just sent. So that's a good indication that everything is working properly. Now to verify that, I'm going to go back to the computer and we're going to check the APRS maps to see if I show up on them. So we're over here taking a look at APRS.fi and this is an APRS map of all the activity in North Central and Northeastern Connecticut at the moment. And in particular, you should be able to notice N1NUG-9 has showed up here. So that means we've got everything working correctly on the Anytone. Okay, so you can see that the path that I'm taking to get to the eye gate is a little bit long. There are a couple of other digipeters closer to me. There's one here and one down here. But I can't hit either one of those because of the terrain that exists here and here and the antenna that I've got. I need a better antenna and I need to put it up higher and then I can probably hit one of these two other digipeters. So what I've now done is I've punched in my particular call sign in the search box here, and I've set my activity to the last two days so that you guys could see some activity I did while I was out driving around. I had a mag mount stuck up on the roof of my SUV and went and ran some errands. And you can see sort of the track log that I generated as I was doing it. I kind of drove around in this general area. Now you may notice my call sign here is N1NUG-5. I was running dash five as my SSID when I first got this going the other day. And then after doing a little research, I realized nine is probably the more correct number to use for a mobile application, so I switched it. But either way, you can see my track log here from that day. And you can see here, if I hover over any of these red dots, the path that was used to get me to an eye gate is kind of highlighted as we go along the path here. And it looks like most of the time I was hitting this digipeter right here. So I think that's going to wrap things up for analog APRS setup on the Anytone D878. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.